So you've learned how to 3D print, you've got your bed level, you got your filament, and then you realize you spent $20 on that roll of filament. Is there any way you can make that last longer when you're 3D printing things? Hey guys, my name is Anton and I'm here with you today and I'm gonna show you guys methods and steps you can do when slicing things to save filament for your 3D prints. So there are many methods you can do this, okay? And there's a lot of stuff I can show you, but I can't give your specific model exact step-by-step -step tutorial of what's gonna save it. So this video is gonna have about three, three and a half steps of, uh, there, there's reasons I have, of settings that I know you can use and try out on your different models that will help you save filament. This is a general tutorial, so you're gonna have to try to take these concepts and apply them to any other things you 3D print. So right here we have a Baby Yoda model. It's a free model on Thingiverse. You could literally go on the front page of Thingiverse, I'm pretty sure it's right there. It's not a small, it's not a large guy, okay? He's tiny, but he's got certain things like these ears right here and his hand that are overhanging and they definitely need support. You can tell this by Incura, the red lines right there. You see, you, you see all that red. That's where it's thinking you need some supports, okay? You also need some on the coats. So currently, if, if you're, don't know anything about Cura, check out a video I'll have it on top over here in the description video as well. But I'm assuming you know Cura. When you go to your info percentages, I'm using about 5%, right? So for this baby Yoda, if I go to preview and see what he does, and I have a, a, the gyroids, you'll see that it's inflowing about 5%. Not a lot. Okay, how can you save? Well, number one, when you slice things, use a very low infill percentage and that was kind of a dub but that was the easiest one that, that is the bang for your buck you just lower that infill percentage there's no reason for your models to be solid none at all there is no reason unless if you're building some sort of parts you need to be very strong but again you're printing them in plastic pla is not really going to be super durable um if you get into stuff like ptg abs yeah okay 100 percent infill on those they're going to be pretty strong, but again, it's still plastic that you're working with, not metal. There's no reason. I mean, the max you can go is about 20%, I would recommend. So lower it down to 5%. You, you look at this Baby Yoda model here, and it's just for looks. You're not, there's no reason to have structural integrity except for it to be good. There's no reason for me to go 20% because I have, if I increase this to 20%, so notice I'm at 40 grams. If I go to 20% and slice this guy, it is going to sometimes, in certain cases, almost double the amount of filament I'm using. So that's step number one you can do to save on your 3D prints, lower that infill percentage. You can almost do, in fact, look at that, 60 grams. So it went from 40 to 60 grams just by increasing this. You can almost do 0% infill on certain things. Now you gotta be careful with this, okay? So this, this uh, tricky one, this is a tricky one, so please follow along. So I did 0% on this baby Yoda. I tried it, I wanted it to be hollow. I was trying to do something uh, unique with that, uh, but, it didn't work out. And the reason being, and this is why it's important to review everything in preview, etc., before you send it to your printer. Notice on this sequence right here, how it's gonna start printing stuff kind of in, in the air at the end. Uh, I think you really notice it about right there. Um, it's hard for you guys to see it right there. There it is. That will not work. <laughs> you cannot print that. And the problem is even though I have supports generated, um, that's inside of the model. So it's gonna to try to print in the middle of the air that stuff, and that's where it failed for me. Some models will work though. So let's switch over to Rick Sanchez over here. Also, free model on Thingiverse. Uh, I scaled them actually 200%, and what I can do is I actually can do 0% infill. He can be completely hollow, and I did print them. But actually, the guy you're seeing behind me in the corner is 0% infill. So some models work, some models don't. Just keep an eye out for it. You see what you need to catch on. That's an easy way to do it. And I need to update my Kira. So let's move on. I'm already taking too much time on this part that I wanted to. Orientation. All right, orientation means less support material. Now on small models like your baby Yoda, okay, right here, this, this guy's super tiny, like very tiny. You can see my 3D printer there. He's using 40 grams. Okay, multiply 40 grams by 20 bucks a roll. That's, you're, you're dealing with 80 cents, right? If you slice, change certain things and all that, you're saving yourself maybe three cents in filament. Don't do that, it's not worth your time, okay? Remember, time, filament save, your time is worth some value. Don't waste all your life 
away on that. But in bigger bottles, you got a lot more you're playing with. So this guy is 130 grams. Um, actually, I don't think I put on supports on this guy. So let's let's do that. So if we do normal supports on Rick Sanchez right here, standing vertically, because logically that's how you would want to print him. He comes out actually kind of high in fill in these. Uh, even though we did 0% infill, he, he is 200%. So I purposely made him bigger just so you guys can see uh, larger models are going to have a lot more opportunities, I should say, to support, have less infill, and your supports need to be played around with. So when we slice him here, fine, it's done. 217 grams, okay? And the reason being, let's see what it's trying to do here. It's trying to support all these hairs, okay? That, it's it's got to make a whole tower going up here. And I'm at 70 degrees uh, for support, okay? I, I'm doing the minimum supports you need to do. Logically, you want to print it this way, but I actually printed my guy upside down. So the way that you place a model and orient it will greatly, greatly affect how much filament you're going to be using. So keep that in mind when you're doing certain models. If you see stuff way on the top of it, go on the bottom. Now, do not do this. Please do not do this. If you're a beginner and starter, I did this when I was a starter. You think, well, let, let me just print it flat. Like, that's the minimum amount. Like, it's all there. What's going to happen is you're going to have terrible details. Look at this. 165 grams. We almost did half off just by flipping him upside down. Now, we do have the arm issue, but he's not going all the way here. And there's just a little bit of the legs here. And we don't lose any details. If you print him completely flat, just so you guys can see it, I'm going to show you guys right now. I'm going to slice this real quickly. Well, he's not going to let me slice it because actually he's too big for the plate. So let's, let's do Baby Yoda here. I'm going to show you guys. It, it actually will show you in preview the issue you have when you slice things flat. So you think, great, you know, the arm's going to be vertical. I'm gonna, the ears are over there. There's going to be no issues. Beautifully done. When you print stuff flat, you lose detail because a printer is going in layers vertically up. So when it's going this way, and you'll see this in preview, I can't describe it in words. You see those circles? That's how it's going to look like. It's going to look hideous. You're going to have these circles and waves right here, and you won't be able to sand that out. It is just going to look like that. It, it is not what you want your model to look like. And the back of it will look like that. You'd rather have your layer lines going vertically up than on the back like that. That will greatly improve your quality. I know it uses more filament, but you want a product that you're actually proud of looking up. So just a small mo moment there. Last one. Last one, but this is a big one. This is when it gets very complicated. So I'm making the Iron Man Mark 85 suit. I already have it all printed out, but I had to redo the right shoulder. So with models that are this big, there's going to be times you're going to be sitting here for 30 minutes to an hour trying to slice in different ways. And it's worth your time because it is a very big print, right? Um, this is how I dropped it in straight up from Cura uh, from my files. That's how it is. Now, I know I want to go vertically as much as I can. And let me get them over this way a little bit. So I got all my detail. Um, also, I want to go forward because remember the printer head goes left and right. So that's what he's going to be doing it. You, you'd rather orient your stuff as much as you can along that axis. Here we go. All right. So th this is pretty good, right? Um, but you see right here, all this red right here. Sometimes you don't really need it there. And you'll learn this as you 3D print. There are supports that Cura will generate that are just ridiculous and are not needed to be done. And even though you got your orientation vertically up, even though you have your infill at 5% of the minimum or 0%, be careful with that, but that is a way to really save it, you'll see the stuff that's just going completely crazy and it's using way more supports. How can you remedy that? Well, you can do this thing called blocking your supports. And in Cura, it's very simple to do. Um, actually, I think that box is kind of hidden on my screen. Hold on, let me move this over here. Here we are. Ah, why is it snapping that way? Let's make it a smaller window. Here we go. These boxes right here, okay? These are what you use to block off supports. See, support blocker. So what it does is just throws a box there. Let's go to our prepare tab, you have to be here. There's a block. So it's not gonna generate supports there and you can make this guy way larger. You can scale him just like any other model. Um, I'm not gonna be doing that because I don't need that right here. But that's something you can do if you'll notice on certain elements where you're like, there is no need for it to support some random little detail right here. 
Watch out for that. You'll learn your printer. It kind of goes hand in hand. You learn your printer, you learn your models, you learn what works. That is one way you can also save some infill because supports, they take up a lot. I have had little luck with tree supports. I've seen people using that and I know Cura 3.7.1 came out. I've used 3.7 and it seems to be a little bit better with tree supports than 3.6. Um, it's not three, is it? it's four, isn't it? Um, but you, you, you want to use as little as you can on that. And with models like this, 216 grams. All right, here we go. We're back. So you see, this is generating support right here, but then we see this terrible thing. Oh my gosh. Now it probably does need it. Uh, if I orient it that way, because it's going to be kind of printing in the middle of the air. Uh, by the way, if you click on that circle right there and then just go with your arrow keys, you can go by one layer at a time. Um, you know what? It doesn't really need that support there. So I have two options. I can either block that out. I really don't want to take the time to start blocking it out. Sometimes it doesn't work perfectly. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to orient this guy about one over there. So it's going to try to support stuff right here. Move it over straight. All right, and I'm pretty content with this. This is pretty good. Um, it's gonna wanna do some supports here, but I'm fine with it because that won't make any supports go all the way up vertically. 70 degrees, by the way, you can push your 3D printer high to the limit. 70 degrees is more than fine enough for your supports. Um, that's the setting I have. If you wanna see my Cura settings, I have a video on that as well. Go check that out. That'll kind of help you maybe with your infill settings. So that's another thing you can do. Last but not least, uh, while this slice is I'm gonna talk about is bed adhesion. One way you could really save some filament is if you lower how you do bed adhesion. But I'm gonna do that, it's the three and a half because it doesn't help you with a lot of filament. This is, we're talking about like maybe 10 grams of filament. You gotta be very careful with that. So you see these wraps that I'm doing right here? Sometimes you need them, sometimes you don't. If you're doing Baby Yoda, you do not need a dang raft on that model. You do not. Now, if you have a wham bam like I do and I love and I highly recommend you guys should get, you probably do want to get that because it will unstick and pop off and it'll be not a good fun thing if you waste 242 grams of filament just because you're trying to save 10. Okay, so keep that in mind. But certain models do not need dang wraps. So change your build plate, plate adhesion to a brim, a skirt, nothing at all. That's fine. Or if you are doing a brim, which or a wrap, excuse me you can lower the margin. So on bigger, wider things that are kind of thin, I do wider ones because I don't want them unsticking. But on things that are like, like let's say baby under, let's say I'm using that for build plate adhesion. I'll lower this to like, I don't know, five, eight millimeters. There's no need for it to do, I think 15 is the default by Cura. There's no need for that. Now it's not gonna save you a butt ton of filament, but it's kind of a little bit incremental change that helps. It's gonna help your, uh, your print time though, for sure. But as you see this guy, we have saved a lot more filament just by orienting it just a little bit. These are really unnecessary. I could go and take the time and try to slice them out. But you know what? That's gonna save me maybe, I don't know, five cents, six cents of filament, I don't care. If you do, go ahead, go change that around. You can either uh, orient it differently, block out those supports, or say don't generate supports. I'm gonna build my own supports over every single red line and that's it. You can do that. In Cura, how about it? It just depends how much time you wanna waste on this. So in summary, remember, filament saving and time saving goes hand in hand. You can do a lot of stuff with big models and try to orient it and it's gonna take a lot of time to save your filament. Some of it's gonna be very reasonable and good just by flipping your model 180 degrees. Some of it is gonna be kind of really time consuming and wasteful. So keep that in mind, weigh out the differences. Listen, you don't want to try to orient your thing in the minimum amount of filament support, filament needed because low supports, no infill, anything like that. And then your print fails. And then you just lost the whole print which costs you a lot more filament. That's gonna cost you a lot more, okay? Remember. Make sure it succeeds and you're happy with it, first and foremost. But two, try to apply these steps such as infill, orientation, support blocking, and get a healthy balance between those without wasting terribly too much time and try to get the perfect sliced G-code for your prints. I hope this guide helps you guys. I hope it helps you lower your filament use. Let me know if there's any uh, steps that you guys know of that I missed down in the comment section below, or if this helped you out, smash the thumbs up, hit the subscribe button down below if you enjoy 3D printing content. There's gonna be a lot more exciting stuff. You won't regret it. It's free, doesn't cost you anything, and I'll see you guys in the next video.